very important. Now, you know, there were spirituals, but there were also secular songs as well, work songs, you know, um, where you would be, be in the fields and just to kind of carry a rhythm or just to make sure um, that everybody was on the same page. Um, but these songs were very important. Um, and as um, Benjamin Mays tells us, um, these, these songs were not an accident. These spirituals were not an accident. They were born out of necessity. They were born um, so that the slave could more adequately adjust to his reality, to his situation. Being stripped of everything else, how do we deal with this? What, what type of, you know, therapy can we give ourselves? Because nobody else is trying to help us deal with this. But we are human, whether they recognize it or not, we are human and our psyche is messed up, man. How do we deal with this? And so part of it was through the music. The music did several things. The music, of course, was a source of expression and solidarity. It was also um, a source of inspiration and motivation. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. Great camp meeting in the promised land. You know, now, that song touched on a couple of things. One, source of motivation. Come on, keep at it. It's going to be all right. You know, that we will, we will get on the other side. That was a really cool thing about slaves when they were introduced to Christianity because they were not presented with Bibles when they got here. They were presented with stories. And so they were able to embrace Christianity in a way that was really pure. They were able to embrace it in a way that they were able to apply it to their situation. That's why you have a very natural uh, um, relationship with Moses and the children of Israel. You know, um, Ezekiel in the wheel, you know, motivation, moving forward, Job. You know, these are things that when you're sitting in a situation of disappointment and of oppression, you know, and then you hear these stories and you understand that this word was a word that was based on faith. Something that they most desperately needed. And then to be introduced to these stories by their oppressors, as ironic as it was, it was the thing that saved us. And then us being able to take that and turn it into more of an African thing in terms of the way that we would sing songs, the way that you would kind of... Because they took our drums. But as long as I got a hand and a foot and a ground to stop on, I'm good to go. You know? And so I can do that. You know, I can do these things, you know? I can be in the fields and, you know, see that backer, ain't it right? Prime that backer from dawn till night. You know, little things like that. You know, now that has nothing to do with spirituality, but it's talking about my work. It's talking about what I got to do. I don't like doing it. I'm tired of it, but I'm letting you know this is what I do. Um... These are also songs of protest. Um, probably one of the most famous songs, but yet probably one of the most radical songs, Go Down Moses. When Israel was in Egypt land, what do you say? Let my people go. Oppressed so hard they could not stand. Let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell, O Pharaoh, let my people go. They wouldn't let people sing that song on some plantations because it was very explicit, it was very straightforward. Not like some of the coded things, but let my people go. Even though. We're talking about Moses, not really. We're talking about us. When we're talking about Egypt, 
In Pharaoh, we're talking about the massa. We're talking about the plantation. When we're talking about crossing over in the Jordan, we're talking about the Ohio River. The promised land is the north. Mm -hmm. Or the promised land is anywhere but here. And that's why these songs were important. Some people say that that particular song was either written or inspired by Nat Turner, who, of course, if you know anything about Nat Turner, who led one of the probably closest thing to a successful slave revolt in this country, um, makes total sense because Nat Turner was very forward. Nat, Nat Turner did not, um, you know, mince words. And so to have a song like that inspired by him makes total sense. Let my people go. Um, the whole idea of call and response, as we did right now, just that little bit of that song brought us together as a group. And that's what these songs did. It brought us together as a group. It was a way for me to talk to you, a way for you to talk to me and to know that we're together. I could start this song on one side of a, of a, of a field and I can hear you respond. And I know, you know, it's, it's gonna be all right because I'm not by myself. I'm not doing this alone, you know? One of the things that you don't read a lot about, at least once slaves got here, you didn't read a lot about slaves committing suicide and things like that. Because there wasn't, they weren't so, the d despair was not so great because they knew that they were together. Even though I may be Yoruba and your Igbo, you know, but now, but now we're over here together. And so we're singing these songs together. And so it's so crucial. Um, also, the idea of call and response, when we think about it as a point of protest, it was also a call to our oppressors. And the response that was expected, that they actually live up to the principles of this country. That they actually live up to the principles and the testimony of the professed religion that they claim. So not only are you calling out to your friends and neighbors, but you're calling out to your enemies. You're calling out to your oppressors saying, you know, you need to do what you say you're going to do. And if not, then you come back with, you're going to reap just what you sow. You're going to reap just what you sow. Sow it in the mountains, reap it in the valley. You gonna reap just what you sow. So you had to call a response, but then you kind of had this kind of Jeremiah type approach where you're gonna send out the warning to people saying, you better get yourself together. Do, treating me like this is not cool. Having me in this situation is not going to get you to heaven and that you need to do something about it. But until that time, I'm going to deal with it because I can, because I have faith that I'm going to get there. And that's what got people through. That's why this music was so important. That's why um, it, it, it was so important because that was the one time that you could assert yourself. It was the one time that you could share your feelings with people, but it was also the time that I could talk to you. We could have a conversation. Way in the water, way in the water, children, way in the water. Trouble in the water. Wait in the water. Now, once again, if I'm the master, I'm sitting on the porch. Isn't that nice? <laughs> hey, sitting there talking about wade in the water and God and everything. I say, hmm, I got my got my slaves in check. <laughs> Cause what we talking about is we're gonna wade in the water tonight. We're going to wade in the water and we're getting out of here. Or when you talk about, for example, there's a song that I used to hear him do in church all the time. Shall we gather at the river? Okay, once again, 
Isn't that nice? They talking about getting baptized. Maybe I'll let them do that one day. No, we talking about gathering at the river and getting out of here. When we talk about camp meeting, you know, a lot of times the slaves would have camp meetings. They would come to a place like this away from the plantation because they could and they would have their camp meeting and they would sing their songs. Now for fear of somebody spying on them, they wouldn't talk explicitly about what the plan is even then because not only did you have possible patrols or whatever, but you had your own people. Unfortunately, you had slaves that would sell you out for a bottle of whiskey or would sell you out for the promise of their own freedom. So you had to be very careful about who you talked around. You had to be very careful about, you know, what you said and how you how you say it so that it could not be interpreted as, you know, revolt or escape or whatever. So that was very important. Um, but they would come together and they would make the plan. And then they would implement the plan. And there was always someone who had the information. Um, like, you know, like the, a play I was telling you about that I'm in, you know, I play a preacher and I'm the guy that knows what's up. Now, up until that time, I'm Mr. Yesa Masa, Yesa, Yesa, Yesa. But now all of a sudden we have this group in our play that needs to escape. And all of a sudden I'm just this fountain of information. And it's like, how did you know all this stuff? Well, I don't tell anybody unless they need it. I don't go around bragging that I know this stuff. And so you always had someone who knew the information. You always had somebody who could share the information and send it to one place to the next. Back in the day before we